What's up? What's up? How are you? Good, good, good. Just chilling. How are you? Good. It's hot today. Where are you at? Who? I mean, the, I'm in the valley. So. Oh, okay. It's crazy. It's crazy so out here. It's way hotter over there. I feel like. Yeah, here's the hottest. Here's always like the hottest, hottest weather. Facts. How are you? How's your Saturday? Good, good, good. I'm here with some friends. Let me show you. Let me show you. I'm here with my producer, Dini. He's from New York. Nice. Up, my guy, Dini. What's going on? What's going hey. on? How's it going? Yeah. How are this you? This is Romero. He's How an artist doing? also. Hi. Nice to meet you. Dini is my best friend. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. Oh, nice to so meet you. Yeah, you got the whole gang. <laughs> yeah, the whole gang is here. You know, we just... We just chilling. There's not, there's not much to do, so we are just hanging out at the house. Maybe go to the studio a little later. Nice. Yeah. Where do you record at? Do you have a studio at your crib? Yeah, I got a studio here in um, North Hollywood. Uh, oh no. Nice. Of, uh, of Violent, yeah, that I use. So yeah, it's all in the neighborhood. I love how it. Is, cool. How is your Saturday? Um, good. Just working. I'm like, you know, I feel like weekends don't apply to music people. <laughs> Yeah, true, true. Like, especially yeah. now, every day seems like a Sunday, so it, it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to, you know, to tell what's going on. Yeah. Well, is I feel like everyone does know because everyone here is your fan. But for those who don't know, who is Dre Rose? Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah, Dre Rose. Well, Dre Rose is an artist from uh, Eastern Europe. I moved to the States when I was really young. And I've been doing music for the past 10 years, you know, uh, rapping right. and singing. And now lately I've been getting more into like uh, management and producing for other artists. Okay. So, you know, just, just growing, just growing. <laughs> for sure. I mean, let's start from the beginning. Just talk about your roots in Romania and yeah. how that played yeah, well, with you. Well, I, I grew up there and um, even at the early age, I was a big fan of like hip hop and R&B. And then when I got the chance to move here with my family, I was 16. And mm -hmm. I really embraced the, the culture, you know. And um, I started, like, rapping when I was, in, like, 2004, I started. Oh, wow. Yeah, so at first it was, like, I first just started, like, burning CDs and giving them to my friends, you know. I, I did like... that in high school, too. <laughs> yeah, that was, like, the thing that I was doing every... I remember back then, Tuesday music was released. On Tuesdays, not Fridays, right. like, now. So I used to like always look, always look out and just download all the new music and burn it for my friends. I used to play basketball. So all my teammates were like, yo, where's the new music at? You know, That's and fire. Then, um, in 2004, my dad, um, he was sick. He had like liver cancer. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Romania with him and um, because he wanted to, to die back home. And then while oh, I was yeah. there, I ended up in the studio uh, in my hometown for the yeah. first time and I recorded my first like rap verse in Romanian and I fell in love with it. Wow, so, oh so your first rap verse was in Romania? Yeah, yeah, I started in Romanian and then in 2009 I was living in Seattle and I created a group, me and two guys, one was from Seattle and one was from uh, from Inglewood. So we had oh, a group wow. called, we had a group called uh, Boss, Building Our Success Story mm -hmm. and they were like, yo, you can't be rapping in Romanian, you gotta you gotta start rapping in English because at first I was like, You guys do English, I just do Romanian. It's like, No, nah, that's hilarious. You gotta start doing it in English. So then I started started working on, on my, my English rap and slowly got better, right? And then, um, at first, everybody was talking about my accent, it's like, Yo, you got a strong accent, right? You know, and uh, my partner Rob Young, one day we we're on the phone, and he was like, Yo, you should just do a song called Excuse My Accent. Oh, and, okay. and make That's it about make about. it about like you know like just tell people who you are and tell them to expect you for for who you really are you know and don't don't judge you because of the accent and that's how we came up with the concept excuse my accent right and um once we start working on the record we figure it's bigger than just me and just than us it's like it's about everybody because everybody has an accent nowadays and everybody comes from a different place so um, it became a, a bigger, bigger, bigger than us. And we just released the video for Excuse My Accent um, right. two weeks ago. And, and it's, it's already great. Three, 3 million yeah, views. It's, it's already 3 million views. It's doing great. Uh, we're getting a lot of traction in the um, Latin countries. 
And now we're slowly gonna start promoting it here in the States, you know, because that's kind of like the focus of the song, the what's going on here in the United States. Right, definitely. I mean, for such a powerful record, at what point were you like ready to release it? And I know, you yeah. know, I had the song ready. I had the song ready uh, before the whole COVID thing started. Really? Wow. But I had to wait a little bit because the whole attention and everybody's attention moved from like immigration and minorities more into like everything was about COVID. So right, right. I feel like right now it's a, it was a good time to release it and to really um, put it out there for the people, you know, to, to bring more unity and bring people together because there's so much division going on, you know? Right. So, yeah. Definitely. And, Talk uh, about getting, you know, you have Rob Young, who's a black artist. You have yeah. Charlie, who's Puerto Rican. Yes. Talk about Charlie the diversity. Is, yeah, we try to, we try to make it, we try to make it um, about everybody. So, you know, me, I'm Eastern European, and then Rob, he's African American, and Charlene, she's Latina. So we wanted to make it like a, like a, an anthem for everybody, you know, to bring right. everybody together, no matter where you, where you're from. So, that was the the idea, and I think we succeeded. And now I'm working on something crazy. I don't know if I'm not gonna tell you, but I'm Wait, working I on. A, give us a I'm working. I'm working on an international remix for excuse my accent. Oh my god! And it's gonna have people from all over the world rapping in their own language, so it's gonna be crazy. That's so dope! Yeah, yeah, Wait, yeah. that's so uh, smart. I already is got a verse good? from my friend Ay from Tanzania. He's he's uh, rapping in um, Swahili. Wow. I got a verse from my 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 friend Skull from Korea. <laughs> wow. I got my friend Sicario. He's he's doing a verse in, in German. So it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. That's gonna be like the next thing that is gonna um, kind of like continue the legacy of excuse my accent. You know. Definitely. Do you so still I'm rap excited in about. Union? Hmm? Yeah, I'm going to rap in Romanian on that one because we're trying to have it like, you know, we're trying to have it like uh, everybody rapping in their own language. So I'm a little nervous because I haven't rapped in Romanian in a minute. But Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna put a lot of thought into the lyrics and I'll, I'll make it work. <laughs> Definitely. When you first were rapping, trying to rap in English, was it hard for you? Were you, did it, you have to practice? It was really hard for me. It was really hard because... Uh, because of the language, because of R Romanian language, I'm having trouble sometimes pronouncing some some of the words, like mm -hmm. the th, the th words. Yeah. <laughs> some things, you know, that, that when you have yeah, to stick yeah. your tongue out, I was having a hard time pronouncing those. So. Oh my gosh, that's just, funny. Yeah. So, but I'm I have a very good uh, sound engineer, and he helps me a lot with my pronunciation because, you know, you want to make the songs perfect, you know, so. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, the visual itself is so powerful. Talk about the creative vision. I know you have a skit in there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was your vision with this, and what did you want people to take uh, away? From? The thing, I, when I finished the song, I contacted my friend Richard Stan. He lives in Romania, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Hey, Richard, I got this record, and I really wanna, um, I really wanna put a visual behind it. It's like, do you have, uh, do you have any ideas?" And he heard it's like, "Yo." This song is crazy. Let me let me think of something. And then like two weeks later, he hit me back with the whole concept. And he was like, yo, Dre, you think you can make this happen? And I was like, man, this is going to be very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all the actors and stuff. And you're but an independent like, artist, right? Yeah, I'm independent. I, I just do everything, you know, with my team. Like I don't have like a big label behind or right. nothing like that. So everything I did, I did it out of kind of like my own pocket. Right. So, but when I saw the vision and he was describing every scene and with the with the frozen scenes and everything, and I was like, man, let's make this happen. So he came to LA, and then my friend Tian, she's from she's from China. She's an amazing producer and oh, director hi. also. Yeah, I'm yeah, Chinese. yeah. Tian Tian Liu Liu is her nice. name. Yeah, she helped me. She helped me uh, cast all the actors, and we casted over a thousand actors. And we picked wow. the best 60. And then, yeah, and then uh, the location was so expensive. I was negotiating with them, like, please, can we just take two more hours? Oh, my God. <laughs> so we can... Yeah, it was, it, was, it was intense, you know. It was like a big crew. It was like the biggest, the biggest project I did to date. So it was, 
it was an exciting, you know, having everybody um, come in and doing that whole the whole video. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely my biggest project to date, and uh, I'm really excited about it. And I hope a lot of people gonna get the chance to see it and make them want to share it and show it to to their friends, you know. Cause, definitely. Yeah. I know, I know it's kind of self-explanatory, but what is, like, yeah. the one thing you want the people to take away from it? Obviously, and, you know, we're the in a world... About, what, what, I, what we were trying to show in this video, we try to show, like, the stuff that's been going behind the scenes in the United States for the past few decades, you know, because mm -hmm. it's nothing like... The same, the, the same things that are happening now, they were happening 10 years ago, 20 years ago, three year, 30 years ago. And to show these different scenarios uh to show that we are vulnerable to what's going on and that we have to stick together and help each other to to really change the world for a better place you know because right. you know african americans are going through things latinos are going through things everybody's going but but at the same time there's division between all of us but at the same right. time we're all going through similar things and only together we can like really make a change and really put those things in the past and really move to, towards the future where it can be a better world for, for us and for our kids and for the people, you know, the next generation. So that was kind of like the idea of it, um, just to present, you know, like all these different scenarios and everything that's going on and people don't really talk about, but it's it's been happening for so long and just just be positive and be like, okay, let's put this behind and just move on and, and make this this a better place so that was Definitely. the whole concept super yeah. respectable um i guess just being you know an international artist i feel like a lot of people always strive for that crossover success and they yeah spend their whole careers chasing it uh, how did you manage to find such a big loyal fan base in not only the states but back home it's just by by um at first I was, I can't lie, at first I was chasing it too. I was trying to just yeah, yeah, make yeah. The, the best songs. I was always thinking radio. I was always thinking like, what can I do to get as much success as possible? But then I went back to my roots and I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to rapping and just doing what I, what I like. And, you know, and I think that's the success. Just follow your heart and do music from your heart. And, right. and people going to, relate to it and they're gonna feel it if you're trying to do things that are forced then nobody's gonna connect to it no matter no matter who is on the record with you and how much money you spend on the video it doesn't matter so it's all about connecting directly to your to your audience and make them feel like they know you and they like the message and the vibe of the song definitely yeah. growing up did you think you would be where you are today just you know uh, no, not really. Growing up, I didn't really speak English. So I remember I used to, I used to listen to like songs, and then I would try like to rap in gibberish, like trying to be like, but I didn't know the language. So Who are you listening fan. to? I was a fan. I was, I think the first, first uh, rap tip I got it was Chris Cross. I was like ten years okay. old. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Chris Cross. And then when I came to the states for the first time, I came to visit in '96. And I'll remember um, uh, Biggie just died that year. Oh, and wow. Crazy. And I'll be, I'll be Missing You was on all the radios. Right. You know, so I like that. And then I got into, like, uh, listening to, like, Bad Boy, like, you know, the whole the whole squad. And I was a big fan of, like, East Coast. East Coast mm -hmm. hip-hop growing up. Like, I like Wu-Tang. I think, you know, the, um, the double CD they had, I forgot the name. The, the reunited the 36 chambers no the one after the 36 chambers it was like oh. a double cd with the black cover i think i i, I had like i had to buy that cd like three times because i played it so much oh my god <laughs> no yeah that was like one of my favorites and then buster rhymes i was a big fan dmx right right, right. i still believe dmx is one of the best he kind of fell off but he's still one of my favorites you know and then right. i started getting more into like west coast too later on like um Park and Snoop and Nate Dogg, so I, I started to balance it out. But at first, it was mostly East Coast when when I came. Yeah. Out. When did yeah. you come to LA? Because you were in Seattle. Six years ago. Six years ago. Before okay. that, I was in Seattle for a while, going back and forth to Europe. But six years ago, I packed all my stuff and I was like, I'm out. 
I'm going to LA. <laughs> you came to LA for music? Yeah, for, for the music. I came in to manage some producers. Okay. And then that didn't work out. And then I start just got back to doing my own music. You know, I tried management, but it's so hard sometimes. You so, said you're still doing it, right? I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. I have a couple of artists right now that I'm, I'm like, I'm developing the sound and everything. So, yeah, I, I enjoy management, but it's, sometimes it's just hard dealing with, with talent. They, right. they think that they owe own you like they think that you know like you're their right. father you're like their father like i don't have to you know clean your room I, you know, that's not my role right you know? that's why so it's hard it's very hard yeah but uh if you find the right artist you know it's it could be amazing you know definitely like, what about you did you ever have management i never really had management i, uh, I always um wanted to find uh, a good manager to manage me but if I'm moving faster than the manager, then right. the manager is not really helping me. Because I like to, like, you know, these days we just move. Like, we don't really wait for nothing. So Facts. it's very hard to find a manager that keeps up with with the creativity, you know? <laughs> right. No, so, I feel you. So I always look for a manager. But it's very hard to find somebody. And all the, the big managers and the good managers, they're so busy with their big artists. So... You can only find somebody that wants to come up, you know? <laughs> right, definitely. No, so, I understand. Yeah. You're an entrepreneur too? Yes, yes. I have, I do a lot of things outside music too. Like even with Excuse My Accent, we turned into a media company and we did a oh, documentary wow. about deported veterans. Oh, uh, wow. for, for, yes, because when we shot the video for Excuse My Accent, my partner Rob invited two deported veterans to, wow. the, to the video shoot. And when I heard their story, I was so like, I felt so compassionate about everything that was going on. So right. I was like, we got to do a documentary about this. Right. So, yeah, so we're getting into like documentaries and we want to have, excuse my accent, as a hub for people's stories and other documentaries and stuff like that. So that's kind of like the next thing we want to develop outside of music. And then I do a lot of things. I have a few businesses, but they're they're on pause right now. <laughs> There's not much going on. Yeah, yeah, everything. I had like the transportation company, but it's on pause. Oh, wow. So I try to diversify. You have to diversify, you know. Uh, Definitely. Especially with music, because you always have to like invest in yourself and in your craft. And if you don't, there's no way to really make it these days. You know, you gotta. You gotta have other other sources of income outside of music. One thousand percent. Well, how has COVID affected your life, career, personally? To Are you honest, okay? I, think I, I released I released my best music uh, since this started because I had more time. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was able to. I released an album that uh, was executive produced by 808 Mafia. It's called Origin. Oh, wait, who from 808 Mafia? Uh, with Fuse. I work with okay. Fuse. And right. I also work with the uh, MP808. Okay, got you. I was going to say TM, TM is my dog. I love him. Oh, TM, yeah, yeah. Uh, MP808 works with TM a lot. They're yeah, really yeah, yeah. close. So, yeah, I did that album. And then I also did a song with Sean Paul. It's called Closer to You. How That's was that? Really... Yeah, it's exciting. I grew up as a Sean Paul. Uh, yeah, fan. I think we all did. When I was young, I had the cornrows, like, and people start singing, give me the light when they saw oh me. Oh, my like, God. Yeah, you yeah, could yeah. be so, here for Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Every time I work with, like, a legend, it gets me very excited. Like, um, I just did this. I have this song with Rich the Kid called Table Stern. I saw that. Table Stern 2.0. Yeah, 2.0. And I got DJ Paul on that one. And growing up, I was a big 3-6 Mafia <laughs> Yeah, no, that's so, legendary. I saw that. That's legendary. Yeah, so when we did the song, I told him, like, look, bro, I know there's all these people on this record, but I look up to you the most. I'm the most excited about you being on the song. You know, it's like, yo, right. it feels like I really appreciate it. Like, I just really had to humble down and really be like, yo, man, I really respect you, you know, and it's always like that with, like, with legends, you know, I always feel like, I don't know, it, it, it does it for me. Like, those legends, like, really... I, I like the new generation too, but the legends are like, I know they don't stream as much, but they're legends, you know? No, 1,000. If yeah, anyone yeah. has any questions, feel free to drop it in. Yes. If they do. But, um, wait, so did 
DJ Paul produce that beat? No, no, no. DJ Paul um, didn't produce it. My uh, my producer Dini and Dini oh, made okay. that from New York. Made the beat, and yeah. then um, and then my um, my friend O Plus. He was really close to to DJ Paul, and he told me about the record. And DJ Paul was like, "Yo, I'm down." So that's how I I met DJ Paul through my friend O Plus. He's also on the record. Yeah. Definitely. So. What yeah. Are, what are three things you need in the studio? Three things I need in the studio. So, f first of all, I don't drink, I don't smoke. <laughs> it's probably That's weird, so good but... for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't drink, I don't smoke. But three things I need. I just need my engineer because he's the he's the best. <laughs> I need my producer, and. That's it. I'm good. I don't need you much. You need something. Yet. Come on. You need something. <laughs> uh, food, I don't know. Some. Anything. Mm, no food. I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. I'm like an organic, organic artist. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I don't really. I don't really need nothing to really like get get me going. You know. I'm, Who else are you into right now from the U.S.? In the in the U.S. Um. I really want to do a song with like Drake one day. That's that'd be crazy. For sure, yeah, with Drake. And then who else I like? I I heard this new kid Fabio from New York. Fabio Warren. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do a song with him. I told my producer he knows him. Like, yo, let's get him on a track before he blows up. I'm not trying to. I you know. know. You know, so uh, him, he's dope. Um, there's so many talented people. Is you know like. And I listen to a lot of uh, Latin music too, so right. I've been paying attention to that market. But you know, I'm excited to hear. Uh, I just heard the new Nas album. I listened to that yesterday. I went on a run. It was good. It's dope. It's dope. It's dope. I have something like a secret project with him too. You know. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to put something big together. Like, I'm gonna turn into DJ Khaled on that one. <laughs> I feel like you're yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of gold. Yeah, I have. Uh, I'm doing actually. I'm waiting for some vocals from Buju Banton. Okay. Yeah, I'm, and, then, that's and then I want to. I want to show it to Nas after that. So that's my that's my uh, my plan because they both respect each other a lot. Right. But they're both legends, so a, a legend won't reach out to another legend to work with right. them. It's like, so I'm, I'm gonna be the middle guy that reaches out to both of them. Yeah, that's <laughs> fire. Know? This, so, guy yeah, keeps, then, this guy keeps saying Paki. What's that? What's Paki? I don't Paki? know. I don't know either. I thought you would know. <laughs> no, I don't know what language is that. Okay. okay. Yeah, so, how, so how, yeah. How are you so tapped in in all these international markets? Like, I can barely uh, keep this U.S. music. There's so much. There's so much. Yeah, it's just like, you know, the, the U.S. market is so competitive and... Uh, it's it's kind of hard to break in like on the major scale so mm -hmm. I always look to diversify and to build bridges between different like genres in different countries and stuff so what I'm doing lately now on, on my next singles I'm getting like a big artist from the states and then I'm getting a big artist from the Latin market or from Europe and I'm putting it together uh, so that's kind of like my, my main thing I just like Combining, uh, you know, different artists on tracks and kind of like classic classy cut style. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it's, hip hop. Yeah, I just enjoy doing that, and I, I'm I'm very like likable. So people build a, a strong relationship with me, like friendship and stuff. So it's very easy for me to like make it happen. I don't know. I have the networking. Uh, talents, I guess. <laughs> right. I was gonna say, I feel like you're one degree of separation away from any everybody you want to work with. Yes. Um. I think so. I think I'm one degree, one degree That's separation fine. from everybody. So, and it's all about like your reputation and always doing good business and always, right. always doing the right thing. So then the door stays open, you know. So that's kind of like it's been my thing since I moved to LA, to just develop strong relationships and don't look for like quickies like quick moves and just exactly you know, if that doesn't last so it's all about like being loyal doing good business and it's just Fine. a matter of time until you end up in the same room with the right people you know definitely what do you like to do for fun for fun i like to work out 
Me too. I, work out like, I like to work out. I try to work out like five times a week. I like playing mm-hmm. basketball, go to the beach, hiking. Nice. Just healthy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. You know, I like to travel a lot, but we're stuck now, you know. Right. What's I the best? I to go to Europe. I wanted What's to go this? to Europe, but they they t- they told me I have to stay 14 days in quarantine when I get there. So I'm I'm chilling. Is that how it works? Damn. Yeah, yeah, That's it works crazy. like that. When you go when you go to another country, most of the countries have this uh, law in place where you have to be for 14 days. That's crazy. Yeah. What's so, the best, What's the craziest place you've been? Craziest place, uh, Guatemala. Ooh. I had a song over there on the radio and they're like, hey, you want to come for a promo tour? And I <gasps> went over there and I went into the countryside. It was, it was intense. It was like... Intense. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was very like underdeveloped, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, there was like radio stations. They only had like a poster with the logo and an and a old computer. That was the radio no station. No way. <laughs> yeah, but there's what many places What records were they like playing? That. I had this song called Chiquitita. It was me and uh, an artist from El Salvador. And oh, I was fire. like, it's like Spanglish, like mostly Spanish with a little English. And yeah. I just made it on the radio. So so it was, it was cool. It was a nice experience. I liked, I liked it. But it was just different, you know. It was much different than I expected it. Because sometimes we live here in the States and we kind of like, measure everything by what we see around us but then you go somewhere right. else and everything is totally different right. and it's like, wow you know you gotta adjust to that but good vibes though it was Absolutely. nice do you speak more languages than just yes i speak romanian and i'm working on my spanish but my spanish okay. i understand a lot of it and i know a lot of words but mm-hmm. i'm still at the trying to make some sense put some sentences together i'm still struggling <laughs> no, it's hard i would i I did Spanish in high school. I can't remember. You did? Yeah, I did. I did French in, in school for seven years. I just know bonjour and yeah. that's it. I don't know nothing, you know. It's like, right. I'm not like a language person. Like I feel like you would be working with all these artists. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying my best, but I'm not, I don't have, like, some people just have a talent for it. Like, some people just, like, can learn languages so easy. And for me, it's always been, like, it takes me a while, you know. Definitely. I guess, what are some goals for yourself at this point in your career? Right now, I just want to um, to promote Excuse My Accent and build a media company and continue to release good music. And uh, when things get back to normal, start touring and promoting and slowly build my uh, production and uh, management company and find talented people and help them uh, move faster than I did, you know. Right. <laughs> Give them, show them the shortcuts. And I think I'll always be involved with music. It's just uh, I have such a big passion. Uh, so, you know, just keep keep doing good things, you know, and spreading positive vibes. And that's going to show me the next step. So that's that's how I look at it. Definitely. What's one thing fans may not know about you? Uh, that I'm actually a very... What's up? <laughs> I'm on the interviews. <laughs> Well, um, I don't know. Sometimes they might think I'm a little more gangster, but I'm really a nice <laughs> guy. <laughs> like, if you get to know me, I'm a nice guy. You know, I'm not that gangster. Right. So, so yeah. So, what are you doing for the rest of the day? Um, I have a couple more meetings. I was going to try to go to Runyon later. It's really oh, hot. Oh, nice. Though. It's too hot. If you go, you got to go around like 7. Even eight. I feel like right now it's like, do you, where do you yeah. hike? I was going to ask where you hike in LA. Um, I kind of like the same, the regular hikes, you know. Sometimes I go to like Malibu too. Depends. Ooh, that sounds nice. Yeah, it depends. Uh, being by the ocean is better right now because it's so hot. So you get a little bit of a breeze. Right, for sure. You, in the end, you're going to be burning. Right. What you're are you doing burning. today? Today I'm just going to hang out with my friends. And then uh, we, we're going to have a session later with uh, Party Next Door's engineer. So we're just going to go trying to get Party Next Door on some Latin vibes. Right. I love <laughs> so it. We'll, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And then besides that, I don't know, maybe tomorrow go to the beach. And what beach do you go to? 
I usually go here to like Malibu, Santa Monica, in the neighborhood. You know, I don't go too far. Malibu Sometimes is go... far for me. I feel like Malibu is super far. But, but where, where do you live? Like... What area I live in downtown LA. Oh, downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you can go to like uh, Manhattan Beach, and, right? Oh, That's yeah, cool. that is nice. Yeah, man. When, do you remember when the during quarantine the blue waves? Did you ever go see those? Yeah, I didn't go. I didn't go, but really, but I I, uh, I noticed it, but I didn't go. It was so beautiful. I went to Playa del Rey. It was super nice. You did, and you could yeah. like it actually worked. Yeah, we saw electric blue waves. It was crazy. <laughs> nice, nice. I didn't go. Yeah, I didn't. My friend was like, "Yo, let's go." I'm like, "Man, I'm not going." <laughs> It's not my style to like run in the sand at night. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice though. All right, I'm gonna take a screenshot real quick. Ready? Oh yeah, do it, do it, do it. Three, two, one. <laughs> Cute. It was so good to meet you. I'll hit good you on to meet you. and everything. And um, if you can um, if you can save the file for the for the yeah. interview, maybe I got you, you can you can send it to me or something so I can yeah, post it I'll, on I'll, YouTube. I'll DM you. So hit me back. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. Bye. Have a beautiful weekend. You Bye. too. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.